is it's harder to pinpoint what the dialectic actually is. But one of the things that I noticed was that one, one aspect of uh, our interest in art today, uh, and going back to the 70s, has centered around the liberation theme. And that the, the, the thing that sort of thrills us is seeing through art ways that different uh, uh, groups, uh, whether it's feminists or gender-based or racial-based, whether it's, uh, um, you know, uh, spread out to, uh, you know, liberation uh, in um, oppressed countries, et cetera, it, it thrills us to see how artists are expressing what the struggle was. That th this, is the, this is the area of the arts we're looking to find an authentic experience. Mm -hmm. uh, what counters that is a, a kind of, um, uh, I haven't really found the right term for it, but it's a kind of mirror experience, a kind of narcissism that is about art that simply represents itself to us as a, as a, a mirror for, for us to just see ourselves in in the, in the most banal way. Uh, this, this is art that you know, tends to uh, uh, deal with um, display, presentation, things like that, or deal with literally shiny surfaces things that we can see ourselves in, et cetera. And that, that, that seems to be the dynamic that's going on. So I, I guess to speak to this global thing, the, the one of the ways that we have pushed out to, is a curiosity to see what, how did the Chinese survive Mao? You know, how, did, how, did, how does India be, become a, a na international uh, well, and also no. about, oh, sorry, sorry. Mary, go ahead. No. I was just going to say that, you know, you, you can look at the ways of, I love the idea of, the, is it a genuine representation or is it a, is it a mirror? What is it? And you, when I think about actual culture going abroad, the one thing that comes to mind about going back to what I said a minute ago about actually waging the war, waging the battle, you know, stepping up to the plate, you think about the jazz, uh, jazz diplomacy. Uh, what worked about it wasn't that they were great jazz musicians, yes. That worked, but you know Louis Armstrong, oh yeah. Yeah. incredible, right? But what worked is that they were themselves. They went abroad, and basically they dissed the United States. They would, in conversation, say, "Well, I think it ain't perfect back home." Let me tell you, and that's when people went, "Wow, that's not what we thought. How can they get away with that?" Who's paying for this? What's going on here? And it's an inventive way, and I always wondered, I don't know who I would ask this, was that really the plan? I don't know, or did that just, you know, there are happy accidents. You know? Well, yeah, and I think, I mean, even, uh, even in our, in our um, the President's Committee, we have a little, a small project called 2020, which is a film exchange, where we, we have um, filmmakers, independent filmmakers from abroad, from all around the world come and uh, here, and we send our folks there, and we and we put them together in embassies around the world as well. So we have a, 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 a small festival here, and then which we're revising, and then we send them around to embassies um, to speak. I think that and to show their films, and then to go out into the countryside of those nations. Um, I think one of the you know things that uh, Obama spoke about a lot during the campaign, which is was empathy. I think that we have, Americans have little understanding and so short supply of empathy for global, for cultures around the world. And I think that this is a way that, that the arts can do, do an important job because basically what is exported from America, by and large, are Hollywood films and they're the big Hollywood films, they're the violent Hollywood films. And I can see, you can, under, you can appreciate why they paint a picture of a culture that would be despised and by many peoples around the world. So I think we do have, we do have a, there is a role for us here and we do need to take another, a, an, active, uh, an active part in them. That's part of the muscle and, and getting back, you know, and I look to you guys to, to organize your uh, compatriots to form no. an army here. It's a done deal. Uh, okay. 
um, thank you. I think we're going to open up to some questions from the audience now. When you think about something like the BP oil spill, there are cultures, fishermen who have been doing it will inhibit your creativity because it will provide you with something that looks creative. So you see a lot of, uh, a lot of mature artists who, for example, use Photoshop, uh, use it because they know exactly what it is that they're looking for that makes their job simpler in terms of making an image you know, that translates into a painting. If you watch uh, young, young artists play around with Photoshop, they simply translate in a very direct and simple way the, the uh, things that Photoshop does. And so it, it diminishes, uh, uh, I think, the creative it's thing. All, To me, it's in the hands of the user. Perhaps there's a, a tendency to, re to overly rely on it. Yesterday, I was driving and I really did know where I was going, but something surprised me. So I started to look at the GPS, and then I considered Google mapping it. And you know what I didn't do? And Heather said this, well, think about it for a second. And I was like, right, I can figure this out. I don't need, and, and I think that that is a, a, a tendency. Oh, on the other hand, used correctly, it's, it's, it's brilliant, it's genius to be able to, to rely on the finding information you could never have found in some ways. If you're, if you're I mean, I, I respect that a lot though, if you're asking the question incorrectly or already not. Or, or looking for answers before you even have the question. A yeah. curse and a blessing. <coughs> also, we don't really know. We're sort of living right in the, we're in the middle of a revolution and we really, it's like the printing press. We really don't know. I mean, I know in the theater, it provides collaboration in a way we've never had before because, you know, they, 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 a writer can be in California. Theater, making a musical, for example, is an incredibly collaborative um, effort. And we can have writers now in California and writers here, and they can communicate in a way that they never could before. So, again, in the hands of the users. Well, I mean, well you know, also, our, the technology that's being created is unbelievably I mean, creative. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it in and itself is yeah. like, wow. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, another example of uh, you know, technological advance is that, you know, when photography was developed, um, what it first did was try to imitate paintings. Uh, and it took a long time for creative photographers to understand that it has something else that it can do that painting can't do. Mm -hmm. And when it did that, it became the photography that's uh, influenced our lives in a, a sense. So. That's, that's very, very well put. Very smart. It is, what is it in itself that it can do? Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah I did. Um, you touched upon it pound gorilla in the room, um, uh, the elitist, the money, how do you get the resources for that? And um, I don't know if you remember, but I think it was in 2003, there was a, a traveling museum, it was called Ashes and Snow, Gregory Colbert, and he set up the containers on the pier in San Francisco and New York, and that was not, uh, that was purely observational, not participatory. Um, don't you think you have to target, I know you said you want to go regional, but it would seem to me to get that money, you would have to bring this to the elitist awareness target cities um, and then use those resources to achieve your goal. So how do you get over that, that gap between sort of selling out so that you have the resources to hit the regional communities? Right. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, that show was a um, uh, for-profit show and, and did very well that way, even though it was underwritten quietly by Rolodex. I mean, or not Rolodex, Rolex. Rolex. <laughs> Rolodex. Uh, mine will probably be underwritten by Rolodex. <laughs> How is Rolodex doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually with Philofax. I haven't seen that in a while. But. Um, the, we're, we're trying to do both, actually. We're, you know, we are targeting uh, uh, large cities. First of all, the idea that a city is an elitist 
uh, thing is, is erroneous because certainly within a city is such a diversity in terms of uh, cultures and whatnot that uh, you would have the same effect that we're looking for in smaller towns and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, uh, this is all education for me because when I first started this uh, program, I thought the hardest thing to do would be to convince artists.